Uh, Linda, there's one other thing that, that I really liked about your design and what, what Dan's crew did is, is this type of framing, advanced framing, optimum value engineered framing, it's completely different in some aspects than normal framing because we're used to putting so much wood in, in, in certain spots where they don't really need to be. Uh, this trimmer or cripple that was put in is strictly here this time just for, for the trim work attachment. This piece of wood is, is normally would, would go all the way down to here and continue to the bottom plate as well as at the top uh, to carry a load, which the load is really non-existent in this particular case, is we would waste this piece of wood and waste the labor. The only reason this piece of wood is here right now is just for the, the trim work, otherwise it doesn't have to be here. With today's windows that we have, the two nails going through this king stud are more than sufficient to carry the weight of the window. So we carry the two foot on center all the way through, all the way to here, to the next stud for the siding and the drywall, and there's no reason to have this piece of wood with today's building techniques. One of the things that we're doing here is using double hung windows. That's why the window is so big. Um, that gives us a couple different benefits. One is because this is in an older established neighborhood, it matches the other windows in the neighborhood. But double hung windows are kind of nice because you can open the bottom and open the top and actually get a convection current in here so you can naturally cool the room. And so by allowing that big window space, you can get more natural ventilation. Also, you get the benefit of more natural light so you don't have to turn the lights on so much. Okay, now I've heard you know, a lot about windows that you know, the double hungs may not be as efficient as, as say a casement, you know, one that's more of a, a hinge type operation. Is, you know, is that really the case today with new, new types of windows, new manufacturers? Or? It used to, in the older days it used to be, but now window manufacturing have co has come so far that really they're pretty comparable as far as different types of units. Okay, so we can, we can use more natural cooling then and, and, and save on the, the air conditioning costs and have fresh air coming in from, from outside rather than, say, turn on our ventilation system all the time, especially in weather like today then. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we just covered the non-bearing uh, section of the house, and uh, on the bearing part of the house, one thing we wanted to look at is the different types of headers that so most of us are used to using, you know, stacked up 2x12s or 2x12s with foam in between. And, and uh, in this case, we went with a manufactured uh, insulated uh, header. Uh, did you run into any issues with that? Or? No, not really. Actually, it was, it was easier to use than uh, the standard method. Was it? One thing about this type of header is the construction. Uh, it has two uh, OSB webs. It has two 2x4 two cords. It's all manufactured uh, uh, in a factory, so we don't have to worry about moisture issues, temperature issues. Uh, it can be delivered in any length, it can be labeled, uh, some will even come pre-wired in certain applications. Uh, it's, it's a nice system that you can use in a 2x4 or a 2x6 wall because it's already insulated and on the outside will add more insulation. So some, in some houses the, the uh, header areas are actually a higher R value than uh, some other sections of the walls. Um, if you want to use this uh, type of material and you're looking at budgets, if you're figuring in your labor and your materials, a lot of times that this product can actually be a little bit less than uh, stacked up 2x12s. There's only one step. You cut it, you slip it in, and you're done. It's already insulated, and all we have to do is uh, add insulation uh, to the outside. One really neat feature about uh, using this type of header is when we go ahead and, and uh, just frame a standard trimmer in, uh, they're still strong enough to carry the load and uh, without having to have a whole lot of extra 2x12s uh, sitting around, you can order these already pre-cut. You can order them uh, uh, um, set up and, and standardized to put into bundles for you, all labeled for the openings if you want. So when the framers come on site, everything's ready to go. One of the things we want to point out is connection detail on the outside wall. When we have a perpendicular wall to the outside wall, typically, we would have framing on each side of this to nail the drywall at each corner. But that's very difficult to get insulation in. So in this situation, we flipped and did some horizontal bracing to allow us to put a back along this framing piece and allow drywall nailing. One thing we're going to want to point out is the trusses as they sit on the wall. That part right there is called the heel, and we have that additionally deeper than a typical roof construction. That allows for more insulation in there and this is a typical area where you have a lot of heat loss. So by increasing that depth, we can put more insulation in there. You also notice that the truss lines up directly with the roof framing or the wall framing. 
that again allows us to carry that load straight down and we use less lumber in the framing. Now, you know, when we go ahead and, and insulate later, we're going to put, you know, sheetrock on the ceiling here. And then since you've already had the, the, the blocks put in, what, what kind of insulation are we going to put above this and then stopping, you know, any airflow from coming into the insulation from the overhang? Well, one of the things we're going to do is somewhat of a hybrid system. After the drywall is up, we're going to go ahead and spray the bottom and up along this edge with foam. That will air seal the ceiling and this edge here so that we don't have drafts here rearranging insulation. On top of that foam, we'll have blown in cellulose. That makes up the difference in the R value, so we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get the air sealing and then the additional insulation. Okay, now in this corner, this, this is a really good uh, spot to show some of the different types of uh, you know sheeting methods. We have the 7 16 OSB on this wall but yet on the east wall we put one inch extruded polystyrene and we have metal uh, lead in wind bracing. Um, one of the reasons we do this is, is because we have good thermal uh, uh, thermal break here with the foam and then we've gone and used this this type of wind bracing uh, in place of the OSB, but why did we have to use OSB there, and, but yet on this wall we could use the metal wind bracing? Well, with this window arrangement, we had it very close to the corner, and there wasn't enough space to get that diagonal bracing in. So we substitute the diagonal bracing with the plywood. Now we'll also put insulation on the outside of that, so we'll still have that thermal break. It just won't be as thick as it is on this wall. But at least we still have some thermal bridging, or thermal, uh, uh, thermal break there, won't we? Right. Okay, now when we look at the lumber, you know, as we, we scan around with the camera a lot of times, like, you know, we have a, a wane right here. This really isn't much of a structural defect at all, is it? It's more cosmetic. Is, right. Is that true? Uh, but, but yet when we, you know, when we start picking lumber, it, when, it, when it arrives, you know, we, like a piece like this, we pulled this out of the, the coal pile. Um, this is something that will evidently probably be recycled for something other than framing, but you know, where do we use our best lumber? You know, we, we pull through the pile and pick, let's say, our 30 best pieces of wood. Where would we use those? Really, you want to use them where it's going to make the most difference in the finish, such as places where you're going to hang kitchen cabinets, um, corners, any place you're going to put trim, anything that you need to be very plumb and square, that's where you want that kind of lumber. So like the back of a, a kitchen wall where the counters are at, um, doors, windows, any of those, and, and then... Right. You know, other, other, like say in the middle of a wall, that's where you would use maybe with a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit more defects. Right. Okay. What do you think the, the most important uh, thing we should get out of this, this episode here? Well, I think uh, what you were talking about in class is probably one of the, the first guiding principles is every piece of lumber needs to have a reason for being in here. It's just something that if you talk to your subcontractors, if you talk to your suppliers, they can pick up on that and talk to you about what you need in the right spot. Um, it, it really helps if you've got the ability to say, okay, this is here for this reason, this is here for this reason, this is here for this reason. And that will help you when you need to make some decisions. Okay, like as, as we've gone through the house today, we can, it, it's kind of nice to be able to see there's some real craftsmanship that, that the, the framers and the builders have done so far. You know, it's, it, it's nice to see that they have kind of gone through, I think, and, and separated a lot of the lumber out that you may not normally see on a job site. It's very clean. Um, it's nice that they allowed us to, to come through here, and, and I agree with you. Every, everything that we've covered in, in the uh, classroom, it's nice to be able to come out here and, and actually uh, sh show on site. Mm -hmm. I think um, one of the other things you need to talk about is the idea of the less lumber, the more insulation. That applies to the 24 inches on center framing. It applies to the energy heels. It applies to the corners and how those are framed. Mm -hmm. And then even just our lack of waste. And it's amazing they've gone this far and there's this, just this little pile of waste. And a lot of that wood I think we'll be able to use as we go along. So the pile of waste probably gets smaller before it even goes into the dumpster. Well, next week we're uh, hopefully going to be at the window stage, uh, installing some doors, uh, siding, uh, house wrap, a lot of uh, issues that have to do with uh, drainage planes and water management. Um, any other specific details we think we're going to cover next week? Or? No, we're really just going to look at the whole outside envelope. How to make it weather tight, water tight, how do all those things work together. The nice thing is it's beginning to kind of maybe come in some rainy days. So hopefully Dan and the guys will be able to get this place put together 
and uh, by the end of the next session, it'll be watertight and ready for cold weather.